Hi guys. Um, I've been out shoeing all morning. Uh, it's New Year's Eve and I was doing a bit of searching with one of my knives, trying to find a bit of pus. And unfortunately, it's not like it should be. You see, that shouldn't be that shape on the end. That should be straight with a little hook on the end. But that's bent. And so I think I'm going to have to make myself a new one. You see, I've sharpened and sharpened and sharpened the death out of it. And it's finally given up right at that bend there. So we're going to have a go at making a new one. Um, I'm not sure what I'm going to do in the way of a handle. I'm going to probably try and use this one if I can knock the rivets out. So we're going to give it a go. Um, other than that, I don't know what I'm going to do. I might find something around the shop, a bit of antler, a bit of wood. don't know, but we're going to try with this first. Right. Okay, if you can see, I've centre dotted these. And I'm just going to go and try and drill them out, see what we can do. All right, we've got a drill up in the drill press. See if we can knock the tops off of these. I don't know how big the rivets are, so I'm starting off with quite a small drill. Let's see if I can get it somewhere near the centre. Just see if I can knock the tops off. Not quite. It's not quite going in the centre, so I just want to try and fiddle it about a bit. Try the other one. It's a bit nearer the centre. That one's almost come off, I think. I might need a slightly bigger drill. Or I might be able to do it just by jiggling this about a bit. Yeah, that's, I think that's not the top off of that one. And if you can see, if it will focus. Yeah, that's not the top off of one. Not quite the other. So we're going to see if we can punch them out. Right, I've just started to try and punch them out. First punch, and I've knackered the bit of wood. So, looks like we're going to have to go with a new handle. Something new. Mind you, I can't complain. This, ha this knife is, oh, I don't know, probably 15 years old, maybe more. And so I've sharpened the life out of it. I've put new, or put a new end on it once, where it broke off. Anyway. What I'm going to make the new blade with, if this camera will focus, is this bit of um, coil spring. I've straightened it out. I'll sort of keep a lump of this line about. It's just under half inch thick, I think. And we're going to start off with a bit of that. I'm going to leave it in one length. Start off with a reasonable size hammer. Because this is pretty tough stuff. I don't any of you will have watched my previous video, I think it was a previous one, I was making the heart hook and you saw how quickly and easily that came down with just a few blows with my little hammer and that is a lot lot tougher. That's just with the first heat and it's hardly done anything. Whereas with uh, that last video, it was first heat was almost done. So we'll keep persevering. Now I'm keeping this quite narrow. I don't know if you, if you ever, ever uh, any of you watched my previous Farrier's Knife video. I wanted it quite wide, but this I want to keep quite narrow because I want to make it a searcher, which is basically for digging out sort of nasty black holes and finding pus and stuff. You want a nice little head on it. So. I want to keep it small, small and thin and delicate. It's getting somewhere near, although still it's taking a hell of a, a bashing and it's still blooming tough. I guess that's the uh, joy of the material. That's why it lasts so well. See, we're getting there. It's sort of just under an eighth at one end, 
just over an eighth at the other. I want to get it down to about an eighth at its thickest really. So I'm going to neck this down a little bit. And I will be cutting it off. Um, but for the time being I'm going to leave it all in one piece. So I've taken that down. So now you can see it's that sort of a, the width I want and when I'll, eventually I'll cut it off and have a nice short blade one end and I've still got plenty of meat this end to put in the handle. So I can let that afford to let that widen out. So it goes nicely in the handle, or whatever I choose to use, which I still haven't decided. Like all my projects, they're not thought out. I just get on and do them. Think about it as I go along. Some people will cringe at that thought, but hey ho. As they say, it's the way I roll, baby. All right. We're getting there, and so I'm probably going to go back to the lighter hammer now. So I'm going to just trim that end off because it's it's got a bit nasty. Right, I'm going to neck it down now the other way, so I can keep the blade. Like I say, I wanted a nice sort of narrow blade. The rest of it can be the handle. But I just want to make this, as you saw that the um, original blade was down to nothing. Well, I know I've worn it down, but it, it didn't start off particularly wide anyway, so I want to get this one down fairly, fairly thin. I still want to keep enough in it that I can Sharpen the life out of it for a few years. Ordinarily, years ago, I would have just gone out and bought a new searcher. But having such success with my last knife, with just a bit of this old coil spring, I thought, what the hell, we'll give it a go. Now I'm just going to start trying to thin this edge out, down, sort of bringing it down towards the blade. The thin edge, so I'm just going to do the, the the hammer at a little bit of an angle, just so I can uh, keep a bit of strength in the back, a spine, I suppose you'd call it, but narrow it down to the blade edge. And I'm doing it from both ways, which I will discover in a minute is not right. See, it's uh, bent there. Some people will say I should have bent it the other way first and then it'll bend back but what's the point? It just bends back easy enough with a couple of taps. So we're getting there. I had that on one of my on my Farrow's knife. Um, the big sort of Bowie type knife thing. It, People were saying, oh, you should have bent it the other way before you thinned out the blade and then it wouldn't bend. Well, so it. it just bends back easy enough with a few taps. It doesn't matter. Anyway, as I see, there it goes. Bend it back. Uh, yeah, as I was saying, I really should have only been thinning that down from one side because I want the back edge to be flat. Stupid enough, me, you know, didn't think about it. Um... So I'm working sort of towards the edge of the anvil there so I don't hit the, the anvil with my hammer. Should be a bit further over the edge so that the front of the hammer goes over the end. Anyway, yeah, as I was saying, with this knife, being a farrier's knife and a searcher, well, any farrier's knife, the back edge is always flat. So it runs flatly ac across the, the hoof. Um, I'm not sure if I've realised yet. Yeah, I think I have. So I'm keeping that edge nice and straight. We're keeping the blade nice and straight. I'm 
probably not going to go too much more with the hammer. And I might just uh, do the rest of it with the grinder, I'm not sure. So you can see there now, I've got it fairly thin and flat at the back and I'm going to get it sharp or sharpish before I curl the, the end up, the business end, because it's going to be much more difficult to try and sharpen it with the curl on the end. So I'm just going to give it a bit of a go with the grinder. I could really have done with it being a little bit thinner in hindsight, but I think it'll be all right. If I can get the business end reasonably tight, I don't think it'll matter that it's the blade itself is fairly, fairly wide. We'll soon see when we come to use it, because I will try and do a video of using it first time out, like I did with my general purpose farrier's knife. If you haven't seen those videos, have a look back through my catalogue. I've got about 200 and, I think this will be 205 this video. So if you think you've seen them all, unless you've seen 205, have a little search through. And uh, for those of you who haven't subscribed, please do. I know it doesn't uh, mean anything to you to subscribe, but it means that you get all my latest videos straight into your inbox. Right, you can see that's starting to get a bit hot because the colours are coming through. I don't know why it won't focus. Well, I do know because it's so blooming dark in this workshop. It's just about focused now, you can see. So, next job is to, I've cooled it out a bit now, and I'm just going to file it and try and get really nice sharp edge on it. Now this file is really fine, so it's going to, probably going to take a while. It'd still probably be better if I was doing it on, well, I'm, yeah, I was just explaining that that back edge should be the nice flat edge. So you just take a, the, the burr off flat. And that's feeling quite sharp already. Um, yes, yes, it's feeling quite sharp. What was I going to say? Yeah, I'm, I'm doing it with a file, although I probably could have done it with sandpaper. You can just see there, again, the flaming camera won't focus. Oh, it's just starting to now. You can see, even though this file's really fine, it still looks quite rough um, and I've you can just see now I've gone over it with some fine sandpaper I didn't show you it because it's so blooming boring basically it's just rubbing a, a block of wood with a bit of fine grit over it until it takes a lot of the um, file marks out of it and it still hasn't completely got them all out but it's got the worst of them out there um, same old thing, you know, the amount of effort you put in is what you get out of it in the end. Um, and I'm trying to do it fairly quickly so I can get the results to show you. Now these are what I'm going to use to um, bend the end up. They're a pair of circuit clip pliers that are broken. The ends have come off and I'm just going to get it hot, twist the end up. Now you've got to remember which way around you turn it. If you're left-handed, it's got to go the opposite way. But because uh, I'm right-handed, I want the curl to come up towards me with the sharp, sharp bit of the blade to the left, if that makes sense. So if I'm holding it with the sharp bit pointing left, I want the blade to come up towards me. This won't take long. If I can get hold of it a bit sharpish, and just quickly bend that up. And squish it back on itself a little bit. See if I can get this blasted thing to focus, and there you can see, nice little hook on the end. 
Now I am going to put a little bit of a bend in there, in this back edge, although I don't want a lot because it is a, a searcher, but I just want a little bit, um, just so it runs flat across the, if I, you know, the, the uh, hoof surface, because the hoof is concave. Um, so what am I doing? What am I explaining now? Oh yes, I'm, I'm getting this hot and I've just got the actual hook out of the hottest bit of the fire because you can see already that's got really hot. So I was keeping the coals off that hook that I've just made. I've just put a little bit of a little bit of shape in it and you can see just a tiny bit just so that that runs smoothly across the, the sole of the hoof if I need it to. Right, so I'm gonna, I've got my oil can out. Some of you may, or I know some people have um, said, oh, you're doing stuff near a, a gas canister. Well, it's not a gas canister. Well, it was a gas canister, but it didn't have anything volatile in it. It had uh, neon, not neon. Uh, I'm just showing you how magnetic that is. I've just put a magnet on there because I want to get this up to, ma to non-magnetic before I plunge it in the oil. Yeah, what was I saying? It's Freon, I think it was, something like that for air conditioning units. And I cut the top off it and filled it with oil and I use it for quenching. Right, so I'm just getting it hot up to non-magnetic. You can see now that's not magnetic at all. Plunge it in the oil, keep it moving. And this is just old engine oil, nothing special because I don't do much quenching. Um, you'll hear me, have said, I would have said on one of my previous videos that when we used to do road chisels, we used to use whale oil because it was, A, it didn't burst into flames when you chucked anything in it, and B, it was very good oil for that type of job. And it wasn't messy because it was it was like clear and very thin. And you don't get all this gunk on it. So anyway, I've cleaned it up, just taken the muck off it. You can see there it's still quite shiny, and that is as hard as now. Run a file over it, it skids off it. If I drop that, that would probably shatter on the floor. So now we've got to temper it. And what I'm going to do to that with that is I'm going to do it with a gas torch. No point putting it in the fire because it's too fierce. Just going to lose, use my little propane or butane or whatever it is. Just give it a quick rub over. And because I've cleaned that up again, we'll see the, the colours come down. If I can get the torch alight because it doesn't seem to want to light. Basically because the gas canister has almost run out. There we go, got it going. I want to get rid of this and get one of those Rothenbergs or whatever they're called. But uh, they're quite expensive. Anyway, I'm just going to play it on the fattest part down here first so that the heat runs down the, the blade because obviously as it gets thinner towards the end it's going to get hotter quicker and as you see I've got that a bit hot already because the colours are running too fast. So I now want to get the rest of the blade hot to catch up with it. You can just see the colours running down there. Purples and browns. I want to get the whole lot about sort of a purpley colour. There we go. Run that even down to the tip. My ugly mug. Right, it's got that nice and cool. So that now should be tempered enough that I can put an edge on it, touch it with a file, but sharp enough that, uh, or hard enough that it's going to hold an edge. And you can just see the colours there, sort of a purpley browny colour all the way across the blade. It's not 100% even, but hell, it's good enough for me. And now I'm just going to try and rub that up again. Um, I'm still not sure what I'm going to do with a handle yet, but I'm going to cut it off because I've got enough meat up there. And then sharpen this up again for a final edge. Right, got it back up in the vise. 
Now I'm using this, it's a diamond tipped, not diamond tipped, diamond coated tool. Let's see what it says, what's it made? Industrial diamonds do the work. And it's made by, it's called Easy Lap Diamond Sharpener. It's an American thing, most of these things are. Uh, where does it say it's come from? Carson City. So this one's still got a bit of life left in it. They don't last horribly long, but you can see already that's just taking that edge off. And it's really, really, really fine. And it's basically for once you've already got an edge on, it's for keeping the edge. It's just for giving your knives a little touch up. If you use that sort of every day, just give it a few rubs every day, that'll keep your knife lovely and sharp. Of course I don't, but that's what you should do. And there you can see, let's just put that edge back on it. What you want to do on the back is just rub straight across flat, completely flat. It just takes the little burr off that gets put on it from sharpening from the front. And that will make, make that really nice and sharp. And what you can do to finish it right off is just give it a quick strop on a bit of really good leather. And that will uh, really give that edge a nice a nice finish and you want to get right up into the the little hook what I often do is um, once I've done this which I do occasionally is give it a bit of, a bit of a strop on my chaps because they're really nice shiny leather but there's some sort of nice rough bits down the edge I can I'll give it a quick strop up and down like the old barber used to do um, and it's amazing, it just does put a lovely little edge on it. Just take that burr off again. Yeah, it feels, feels real nice, nice and sharp. So, I've got to decide what to do with the handle. I think I'll cut it off and have a little think. So, I've cut it off. And I've had a little look around the shop and I found this bit of antler. It's a bit that's... I never really could do anything with it because it was a funny shape and it had bits and nicks and lumps and bumps out of it. So I've just tidied it up a little bit. And it had a, a, a really funny curly bit on this end. So I've taken that off. I reckon that might just about do it. If I can slip that in there. Because it actually feels quite nice in the hand both ways it feels quite nice so I'm going to give it a go just out of interest if nothing else just to make it a little bit different I know years ago all the old farriers knives used to be bone handled or horn handled I think they used to be cow horn or something similar and that will just about fit the width as well so I'm just going to try and cut a little slot down the middle of there Okay, so I've got it up in the vise. Of course, I forgot to put the camera on for the first cut. Dimbo. So I'll just show you the second cut. I'm going to whiz down it with a hacksaw. And a quick slurp of my cider. Oh, that's better. Thirsty work all is talking. Right, amazingly... I've managed to keep that fairly straight, fairly parallel. Quite often when I cut slots, they um, go all over the shop. So I'm just trying to knock that bit out of the bottom by angling the blade, I'm cutting it off at the bottom. So I'm going down both sides, angling the hexal blade. And there it goes, out it comes. Let's have a little look. For a hacksaw cut, for me, that's astonishing. Absolutely amazing. And so it's not quite big enough for the blade, 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and thin the blade out a little bit with the grinder, make it parallel because it's not particularly, and I'll open up the slot a little bit as well. I've got uh, a little square file, flat file here, which is just about the right width. It won't quite go in at the moment, so I think if I can force that in, or not force it in, but file its way through, um, and then make the take a little bit off the blade as well, that will be about the business. This is another one of those really fine ones, so it's going to take a bit of time. I could have done with a coarser one, but I haven't got a coarse one that's either thin enough or fat enough. This is the only one I've got that's about the right width um, to go through there. It keeps catching, which is a bit of a pain. I suppose what I could have done was sort of, I don't know if greasing it up would help. But Anyway, I'm sure if I persevere, we'll get there. Yeah, I don't want to hold it too tight in the vise, that's the trouble. Because I don't want to damage it. But let's have a little try. Yeah, see that's going in not bad. That's gone down to about where I filed. So I'll do that and then I'll probably still take a little bit off the blade. So it fits in a bit. Bit more snugly, just take a little bit off there. I know I'm probably waffling, but I'm oh, actually, you'll see in a minute, this video has been done over two days. Well, it's been done over more than two days. So I'm, I like to try and narrate my videos straight after I've done them. So I remember exactly what I was doing when I was making them. I'm making a video, but because this is now, I don't know, three days or so after I actually did this, of course I can't remember what I was saying to myself while I was actually making the video, because that's what I tend to do, I talk in my head to myself as if I was narrating the video, um, so that when I get home and do the editing, I sort of know what I'm saying. So I just sort of repeat it, but I say with three days gone past, I can't remember. Can't remember what I did this morning, let alone three days ago. Anyway, we're nearly there. I think that's got the slot nice and even now. The camera will focus again. Yeah, you can see that's quite a nice parallel slot. So all I've got to do now is make the blade parallel to fit. And so I've done that. Oh, come on, focus camera. I don't know why it takes so long. Well, actually I do, because it's so blooming dark. Right, I've got my slot. As you can see, I've narrowed the blade, I've thinned it, and I've put a few little nicks in it to hold the epoxy, because I'm not going to rivet this one. So I'm just going to epoxy it. So I just want something to, for it to grab onto. You know, as a searcher, it doesn't get a great deal of grief. So it won't need a whole lot of holding in. So I reckon if I put that in and square it up, get the epoxy in there, that will work quite nicely. And if I'd got the camera zoomed out, you could probably see what I was doing. Anyway, that works both ways. I think it's going to be better that way. Now I've worked out the zoom. Now I'm just trying to work out in my mind which way it feels best in my hand for working with. Turn it around and try the other way. Yeah, I think it's going to be that way. So, we're going to get the epoxy in a while. I'll, I'll get it straightened up. Get some epoxy mixed up. And we'll give it a go. Let's see what happens. Yep, I reckon that's the way. That's the way it feels best, so that's the way we're going to do it. We'll get it straightened up. Alright, 
I've got this little bit of old aluminium. I'm just going to mix the epoxy up on. And it's not really epoxy. Well, I don't know what it is. It's this Araldite. It's a um, two-part job. It's supposed to be five minute. And you just put equal parts. It's called, I think it's called something like uh, instant metal or something or other. It's supposed to replicate metal, but who knows. So we'll just squirt out equal parts. This one's a real sticky one. Now, some people have had a good idea about mixing epoxy. This is a bit solid for doing it, but a uh, slightly runnier epoxy. I'm just going to use an old hacksaw blade or part of a hacksaw blade to try and mix this up. Um, yeah, the, the slightly runnier epoxy, if you just squeeze equal parts into a tiny little um, Ziploc bag, and then you can squidge it around in your fingers to your heart's content in the Ziploc. And then if you just literally cut a tiny, tiny little corner off the Ziploc bag, you can squeeze it out like an icing bag, which I think is a really good idea. And then you just sling it away. But this stuff's a bit thick to be putting in a Ziploc bag. I suppose it, it might have worked, but I'm too lazy. Plus, I haven't got any Ziploc bags with me. I've got about a million of them at home that I used to send games away in, that I used to make. I don't even know if I've got a video of the games I used to make. Anyway, let's see if we've got enough epoxy to squidge right down in here. Push it right in. I'm not too worried about it going over the edges. Um, if I was, I would have covered the, the rest of it in like masking tape or something like that. But as I'm going to sort of sand the whole thing down afterwards, I'm really not worried. I just want to get it all squidged right down into the the groove. Obviously take off as much excess as I can, but I'm not overly concerned. So I just want to squidge it right down so it gets in those nicks that I've put in the blade. So it's got something to grab onto. I didn't put any on the actual blade before I slid it in which I suppose I could have done, but it was a real tight fit, so I probably wouldn't have got a lot on anyway. But actually it might have made it slide in easier, and uh, it may well have gripped a little bit. But hey ho, hindsight's a wonderful thing. I'm just gonna put uh, the last little bits on. Right. I've sort of got it on there. Let's uh, stick it up in the vise so it sets. Right, now you can see by my clothing, this is like three days later. It's eventually gone off, but the five minute epoxy didn't go off in five minutes. I was there another hour or more and it still hadn't gone off. I think it's because it was so cold. So that was New Year's Eve. It's now January the 2nd, I think it is. But it's all set, and I'm just going to file it all off and tidy up the rest of the, the handle. So now I'll probably remember what I did, because this was today. So we got it up in the vise. I'm going to start off with a quite a coarse round file. Let's take the worst of it off. See how it's coming off quite nicely. I've also got here, I think, yeah, an old rasp with the end cut off. I must have used that for something or other. Just go over it a bit more. I don't know, well, you can see it's the quality of the film's a bit grainy. But uh, it's really dark in this workshop. It's very, very dark and miserable day today. In fact, it, I don't think it stopped um, raining all day. I'm going to get uh, real back to the fine file on there. 
I want it to be nice and smooth. I'll do all the edges. Oh, I've just touched the blade there. But luckily, it has taken a bit off, but luckily that part of the blade isn't going to get used for sort of work much. It's the, the other end, the business end, that's going to get the, the most of the work. I'm like an ordinary farrier's um, knife, which you use the whole of the blade. For searching, generally you just use the, the hook end, digging out little holes, trying to find the pus. There you go, smooth that off quite nicely. Do the other side. Um, yeah, digging out the pus is um, extremely gratifying. Unfortunately, it's not something we can do very often. I'm just going to get the coarser one on here. Um, you can really only dig out pus if you happen to be there at the time and the horse is lame. Uh, unfortunately, due to our legislation over here, um, clients can't call you out specifically to find pus. If you happen to be there, um, that's smoothed off nicely. I'm just going to go over the tops here, get the, the bit off the top where it um, has gone onto the blade. Um, yeah, as I was saying, if uh, you happen to be there in the horse's name and they say to you, can you have a look? And you find the pus, then very well, yeah, that's, that's brilliant. Um, or if it is an emergency, absolute dire emergency, the horse is crippled, you happen to be passing, you can get there quicker than the vet, then you know you can you can look at it. But if if it's just a sort of a, oh perhaps he's a little bit off, can you come and have a look? And you find you know, and they suspect pus, you, you you shouldn't be doing it. It should they should call the vet out, but. There you go, that's uh, the legislation over here. So that's got that sort of tidied up. If it'll focus. So that's got the worst of it off. I'm going to tidy all these edges up now with some sandpaper. Those dark bits are just where I've been holding it in advice. I want to try and get all these dark marks off. There's paint and all sorts on here. So I'm going to give the whole thing a sand off and this bit here particularly I'm going to do that first with the grinder with a flat disc because that's particularly uncomfortable in the hand. So I've just got an ordinary flat disc and a grinder. I'm just going to give it a quick go over. As I was saying, yeah, when you do find pass it's particularly satisfying. We're all concerned, you know, it's, there's nothing worse than a lame horse and not knowing why. If you find it, it's good for everybody. The horse is out of pain, it's almost instant in most cases, it takes the pressure off. It's like if you've got a black nail and you burst it. Um, it's good for the owner because they know what the problem is, they can get on and pulsate it. And it's gratifying for you that you've, you've done a service. Um, so it's, yeah, all in all. A good job but anyway there we go that's better that feels much nicer now that's off so I'm going to try and clean the rest of it up get it all tidy and neat right so I've given the whole thing if it'll focus there we are I've given the whole thing a go over with sanders and um, coarse paper and files and all sorts and it's come up much nicer. I'm not sure if I'm going to take it home and put some dremeling on there, do some sort of, um, perhaps some sort of embossing. I don't know. Like a bit of a pistol grip effect, but for now I'm just going to go over the sandpaper, the real fine emery this is, because I want it, whatever I do with it, I want it nice and smooth. If I do do some sort of engraving, you know, I want it nice and smooth. Anyway, I'm going to do a bit more of that. I won't bore you with that because it takes forever. Right, I've decided I'm not going to put any embossing on it. I can't be bothered. I'm just going to wax it. I just use this Bry wax, which we use for all sorts. It's a clear one. 
you can see it's rock solid because it's so cold here. I'm going to use an old paintbrush which I've cut the end off so it's sort of stumpy. I cover it all over, get it all everywhere so there's bits of it coming off because it's so blooming cold and hard. And you might think, well, that's not much cop because it's cold and nasty and it won't go in. I've got the heat gun. This is a like a proper paint stripping heat gun, not like a hairdryer. And that works a treat. Blow it all over, it melts the stuff instantly. And if I can get close up, you can see that's turn it into liquid. Look at that. And that'll blow it all around and if it's in a bed of wood that's beautiful that'll soak straight in the grain and you can do two or three coats of this with the hair hair dryer with the hot air gun and that really soaks in beautiful don't know quite how much it's going to soak in on this stuff because i'm not quite sure how porous it is it seems to be just melting at the moment it's going into the the sort of uh, open pores which you can see in fact, I'm just going to put a little bit more in that end because that's an open, a real open end. That'll probably soak up quite a lot. Give it a bit more. There you can see that that's going really nice and liquid. Get that to soak right in. I say on furniture and stuff, this hot air gun is brilliant for getting it to go in the grain and all the little nooks and crannies. My wife does uh, a bit of furniture restoring and it's uh, one of the tricks she uses. Right, so, just going to get a bit of, um, sort of tissue, no not tissue, sort of workshop paper, sort of stuff that comes on a roll. I'm just going to give it a, a rub up. Now it's sort of soaked in. Just take any excess off. Of course now it's dry. Oh, sorry, trod on the tripod. Not the camera. Give it a good old rub. As usual, I'm being a bit, doing things a bit quickly here, just for video's sake, this is a fairly long one already, 40 odd minutes. All right, let's see if we can get that in the light and you can see, if that'll focus, see that lovely sheen on that. That's real nice sheen on that, it feels lovely. Even though I haven't spent hours and hours getting that 100% smooth, that really feels nice now. And that protects it as well, from a lot of the muck and grime of the daily use and that feels nice in the hand so yeah I think that's going to be a really nice useful tool nothing special nothing fancy good everyday tool that hopefully will dig out plenty of holes so there you go I'll probably do a video of using it first time out see if it works or not but there you go DIY Searcher. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.